go. My trailer is a 99 Hornet with a 6-gallon Atwood water heater. And it has finally started to leak. The little cheap plastic plug is leaking, and my relief valve is leaking. So my answer was, I'm going to replace both of them and upgrade at the same time. So, being that I live out in the boonies, I'm getting pretty sick and tired of these picky people coming up with excuses to fill my propane tanks. And I don't like having to trade them out at Walmart every single time I need propane, because that requires a drive. So, they've been coming up with excuses. Oh, it's too cloudy out. Oh, there's static in the air. Blah, 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 blah. So this way, I can use my propane for just my oven. And I can use the electric for my water heater. Because I'm only one person. I only do dishes, and I only shower with hot water. And that's it. So... Not using propane for all that will be excellent. So it's nighttime. I don't care. I got off of work. I'm going to install this thing today. Right now I've got a load of wash running. That way I can use up my hot water. And then I will turn all the water off and continue this process. So now I'm going to open up the box and see what we got. Very simple looking. I've already read the PDF online so I knew what I was getting myself into. This isn't going to be bad at all. Got our heating element. This is for the six gallon tank, by the way. Got all the color coded wires and color coded connectors. Got more color coded wires. And then one heck of a stout plug. Now the thermostat, which is gonna be 3M adhesive taped to the side of the thermos or tank, my bad thermostat cover so you don't get stupid and touch things you're not supposed to and the 3M tape and then all your different adapters and reducers for the specific tank that you have along with some Teflon tape oh and then oh that's cool they gave us a grommet too I was expecting to gr drill into the housing and have to use adhesive or something like that to seal it up but they give us a grommet that's kinda nifty I don't plan to use the grommet though because although the instructions say, I think the instructions said it, I, I read through it before. Well, somewhere in the instructions I read, I believe, said don't route the wires along the propane pipe but I plan to do that because I'm not an idiot and the propane pipe is not hot at all nor am I going to cut into the pipe or anything like that I'm just going to remove a little bit of adhesive next to it slide the wiring through and put a new layer of adhesive on there to seal up the hole because I don't feel like drilling holes unnecessarily when there's already a perfectly good hole to use. So while my load of wash is running, I plan on doing things a little out of order and I'm going to install my thermostat since right now I don't have the water turned off. I'm gonna get the thermostat in there and then by that time the water should be done. I can turn that off, drain my tank, install the relief valve at the same time as installing the the heating element, and the appropriate reducers. So, let's get to doing that. I found it. Do not run wires through the gas line inlet. Well, guess what? I'm going to do that. Because I can. Underneath my cabinetry, right next to my power inverter converter deal, and per the instructions, it also says, ideally, put it on a flat surface. Well, the flat surfaces of my tank are tucked into the side there and tucked into the side there. Um, yeah, that's not going to happen because I'm not removing any of my cabinet walls to install this. So... I'm going to remove a section of styrofoam right here 
and stick it to the side of the tank there. It's got some curvature to it, but if that thermostat's touching that tank, it'll get plenty hot enough to realize what temperature the tank is. So, time to remove some styrofoam. That was quite easy. Uh, instead of putting it here like I was planning, I just removed a little bit there. And voila, that'll stick right in there. As you can hear my wash going, it should be done any minute now. The tank is cold to the touch, so using hot water for my wash is perfect. And then I get to go outside and do the rest of this process. So let me clean this section off with some rubbing alcohol and I'm not gonna stick this to the tank yet. That way I can do the wiring easier without having to mess with the wiring while it's adhered to the tank. My gas line comes in through the side there. So hopefully I'll be able to reach the wiring back there and I'll snake it through. All right, on to the next process. Okay, so I installed the new relief valve. That was painless. A couple wraps of Teflon tape. Yeah, it's done, okay. So, I've got the smaller reducer installed, because the Atwood uses a, I think it's a 7 8 but I've got a 22, which is a 7 8 blah, blah, blah. It would be a lot quicker if I used a ratchet wrench, but I don't have a ratchet wrench in 22. So, I'm just doing like a quarter of a thread at a time to get this first reducer in kind of tucked up in there, so it's kind of hard to get anything really on it. So I'll be here for a little bit. Whoops. That was the exhaust shield making a noise. So I plan to run the wires through that and then just recaulking it, resealing it, because I certainly don't feel like drilling through anything else. If I go anywhere over this direction, it's going to get too hot. So this is where it stays cooler. So it's going through that epoxy. And I'm not going to film the rest of this boring stuff until I get it the rest of the way, well, tightened. So the second reducer is now going on, which has the compression fitting for the heating element. Go figure, I've got a gear wrench for this, but I can't get it in there. So open end it is and it's going to take me a bit to get that threaded in there. So the tool list so far has been a pair of adjustable pliers, bam, a 22 millimeter, a 14 millimeter, and then for the compression fitting it's going to be a 16 millimeter. And this is for the Atwood. I'm unsure about the sizes for the other ones, but I'm sure the instructions probably cover that. So let's do this compression fitting, and then I'm gonna turn the water on, bleed the system out, and make sure I've got no leaks before I go to the next steps. All right, compression fitting went in, no problem. It said in the instructions, a half inch to a quarter inch of free end of the heating element sticking out. That looks like about a half inch to me, just over a quarter, whatever, good enough. Let's go turn it on and hope I don't have any leaks. Well, I have a leak. And it looks like I didn't tighten the compression fitting enough. So, I'll crank that down some more. All right, so that's been done. The wiring is now ran through that gasket, which I will be re-epoxying here shortly, because that was some gnarly epoxy. I gotta find out what that stuff was. Looks like it was a water leak at one point, maybe, because it's epoxy over one of the bushings. So, good stuff. And good timing, too, because it's starting to rain, so good thing I'm done outside for now. So I can 
close that up and to the inside wiring I go. So it looks like a wiring disaster right now because I haven't tidied anything up. But thermostats installed, all the wiring is right, and it's turned on right now. So nothing exploded. That's a good thing. Um, right now my I've got a power meter, and I normally run about with my trailer at idle, well, car term, I guess, but with just my fridge running, I should say, I'm normally sitting at about eight cents an hour uh, for 11 cents a kilowatt. And the moment I turn the heater on, now it's at 20, um, I think it said 28 or 20 cents. So basically a quarter an hour sounds like to run the electric heater. So, it's better than propane. Easily better than propane. So, now I'll wait and see how long it takes to get to temperature. I left the uh, I left the thermostat at the default temp. I believe they said it's set to uh, either 120 or 130. Let's see. Either way. I, I left it there. So I'll be able to feel the tank and see how it's doing. Should be exciting. Yay. No more dicking with propane. Oh, um, the one in interesting installation that took me a little pain in the neck was the ground wire. There's nowhere really to ground this thing, and I don't feel like sticking it to the tank, whatever. So I had to run the ground wire back outside, and getting my arm through there wasn't exactly the most fun experience in the world. But I got it back there, got it through back through the O-ring, and I used the bolt, or one of the bolts, a little tiny, it looks like a six millimeter or something, that holds the exhaust shield on for my propane. I unscrewed one of those and grounded it by that. So, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We are installed and ready to rock and roll. I hope to have a hot shower within an hour or so. All right, that was my install video. Cool.